You can tell when your ex is spiraling in guilt and shame and, and regret after losing you. There's a few things that he's going to do and, and it never fails. And I'm not even big on look back at your ex, look back at your past. But if you don't understand these things, you may end up letting them back in. You may end up blaming yourself. You may end up somehow repeating the same cycle that you got led into the first time. So I got this question, actually not even from one of my Self Crown members. This was on my last free masterclass, the Secrets to Making Evolve and Crave You Masterclass. Some of y'all know I do a Q&A right after, answer all questions and stuff like that. And if you missed the last one, you can catch the next one at the link down in the comments or in the caption whenever you see it to get access to it. But anyway, the question was, Derek, how do I know that my ex is really sorry versus, or if he's really sorry versus if he just wants to get back in and do me bad again? And I'm going to say this. I don't even want to take that long on this one because I'm, I'm, I'm going to get straight to the point. When your ex, after the relationship ends, is trying to avoid guilt, trying to avoid the shame, trying to convince himself that he was not the problem. The first way you know, and this is going to seem obvious, but he's going to try to get you back. Not get you back because he wants to do better. Not get you back because he's had a chance to see things for what it clearly is. Not get you back because he loves you, but get you back just to remove the pain of loss. Some men have not evolved to the point where they can handle any kind of uncomfortable pain. And any man who runs from any type of discomfort also runs from growth because growth is uncomfortable. So when a man has not evolved to the point where he can handle the uncomfortable pain of loss, of shame, of guilt, of whatever his conscience is trying to, to convict him so that he becomes a better man going forward and he doesn't make those same mistakes whether with you or somebody else he'll try to soothe that pain by any means necessary so what this looks like is a man that after he does you wrong instead of saying you know what i do want to take some time i do want to get that help i do want to address these things not only does he have this you know profuse apology but it's this urgency to get you back right now there's no regard for the time that you need to heal there's no awareness of what bed that he's made that he now has to lie in of your distrust and that you need to see new patterns if you're even going to entertain getting them back, letting them get back in your life. None. It's all selfish. I don't know how many of y'all have been hurt, betrayed or whatever. And it just felt like this man is going so hard to get me back, but something don't feel right about it. He just wants me back. He doesn't want to do me right. He just wants me back. And if you're not careful, your broken heart which is likely attached to the familiar as well, will let him back in so that you don't have to deal with the feeling of loss. Because it goes both ways. But when a man just tries to hurry up and hurry up and hurry up, get you back, get you back, get you back, get you back, no attention to fixing the part of him that broke you. No awareness. No compassion for the fact that you need some time to even know if you want to get back into a relationship with him or anybody else. More than likely, it's because he's spiraling in guilt and regret because he lost something. Now, here's the danger in letting that type of man back in. Because he didn't put any focus on fixing him, dealing with him, healing him, or whatever it was that caused him to hurt you, if it came from that type of place. Some guys just come with a hidden agenda, of course. They don't have good intentions to begin with. But if he's not doing that, it's going to resurface. The moment that that pain is gone again, the pain of loss is gone because now you back in and he has access to you all over again, he's going to repeat the exact same behaviors as before. He was only motivated by that pain, by that abandonment wound he never healed. And now that he's actually lost you, the one that actually caused the loss, now that that pain is gone, all of them I'm sorry and stuff like that get replaced by the same old behavior, probably blaming you even more this time, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the first way you know. If there's this, this emergency urgency on getting you back and not that, that energy is not invested in to dealing with the, the ugly parts of him so that he could do you right if you even bless him with an opportunity to get you back. You know he's just spiraling in guilt. The second way that you know is if he jumps right in and that's where, where the relationship or into like this sex capade. He just goes on this rendezvous. He's just getting, you know, spreading his oats, so to speak. That man is trying to, he's trying to distract himself. He's, he's, he's trying to put off all of the, again, convictions. Because when you do something wrong, if you have even an inkling of a conscience, God kind of designed us in this way. It's going to start haunting us. And what we're supposed to do with that being haunted is, of course, be truly remorseful and then turn that into a conviction to move better the next time. It's natural. It's actually supposed to happen. But what some people do is when it starts haunting them because they're so sensitive to negative emotions, again, they cannot handle any type of discomfort. 
What they'll do is they'll find a way to block it out. Block it out. Go get some new, new, new. Go jump into a new relationship. Slander you to that person. And so that they can tell them things and make them feel like they were never the problem. And the whole time, he's still missing you. He's still missing you. His pride and ego says don't go back though. Y'all ever dealt with a man? Put I down in the chat. If you've ever dealt with a man, slandered his ex, talked bad about her, she was just the most horrible monster on earth. And he went back to her or you caught him trying to go back to her or they were still dealing with each other. They never even really stopped messing around. Put out down in the chat if that's ever been you or or if you've been the ex a man kept knocking on that door of meanwhile, he was talking to like you was so bad. He just acted like you was just the problem, the monster, but he could not leave you alone. He would not leave you alone. Put out down in the chat if I'm talking to anybody right now. That lets you know that that man is spiraling in his guilt and his shame, but he won't confront it. So he runs from it and he runs from it into the vagina of a new woman or into a relationship of the new woman. Of course, AKA rebound, but a rebound can also be a woman that's just there for temporary purposes. And now he's going to surround himself with women who only using him more than likely for the money that he's splurging on or whatever, because a lot of women, even if they don't have long term intentions, they do have intuition and they know whether or not that man is there for them or not. And some women say, you know what, you're trying to play with me. I'm going to play the game with you. And you really know he's in this situation if you see his life go downhill because of the women that he's dealing with now. But that's another story. The one I really want to get to that lets you know if a man is 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 just immersed and consumed with guilt and shame and not even genuine remorse, but really regret after losing you is if he goes on a smear campaign. And some of y'all think a smear campaign is just when a man, you know, goes online, goes to the church, goes to whatever, your network, whatever, and tells lies about you. A smear campaign, and actually I would say the most common one, is when a man tells half-truths. And this goes both ways. Women do the same thing. But when a person tells half-truths, and my mom used to tell me a half truth is a whole lie. So whenever he talks about all the bad things you did without any context, he's intentionally painting a deceptive picture of you, which is still slanderous in nature. It's misleading people about your character. Now, why does a guy do this? Because he's a narc. Maybe, maybe. But I actually think that's less often the case. More often the case, that shame of the reality of what he lost whenever he lost you. Yeah, he lost some of those quote unquote flaws and imperfections and maybe those moments where you weren't your best self, but he also lost all of the good that came with you. And let's not even get on, matter of fact, we are gonna get on. The fact that a lot of those negative things that you did likely were reactive. Y'all ever had somebody talk bad about you and how you showed up in a relationship? Man, she said this, she yelled at me, it was in front of the kids, it was in front of my mama, she came up to my job. But they didn't talk about how for months prior to that, you had questions, you had tried to, to have healthy communication with him about your concerns, but you were gaslit into believing you were the problem. It was really your trust issues from all the other times. Other men in your past did the exact same thing he was actually doing. And then whenever you found out, you fucking snapped, excuse my language, but you snapped on him. It was, a, it was a straw that broke the camel's back. And yeah, you yelled. Yeah, you cussed. Yeah, you called him out his name. Yeah, you went up to his job. Yeah, you went through his phone. But that was really your breaking point. Y'all ever had somebody talk like that? They, they, they tell that one little splice of when you were not your best self, but they don't talk about the role that they played that led up to that point. And they don't talk about all that you did that was the right way to handle things long before it got to that point where they didn't do their part to meet you halfway. Not only did they not leave, meet you halfway, they were creating the issue to begin with. Man, she, she did this, she did. She went out all night and didn't tell. <laughs> Whole time he's not talking about how you done came across all kind of stuff in his phone. He's, he's not talking about how he was stonewalling you. He was walking now. He, was, he got too busy for you. He emotionally neglected you. He's not talking about how he manipulated you, how he leveraged your insecurities to make you feel like you were the problem because you were truly trying to be a better woman and be accountable. The whole time he was using that to hide, hide, from, hide the fact from you that he wasn't being accountable. He wasn't being his best self. Not only that, this smear campaign keeps him from acknowledging what he really lost. Kind of goes back to the first point. But in this, a man is trying to avoid that guilty conscience of not just lost, period, but the great woman he lost. Look, I don't care how much of a smear campaign your ex goes on. 
Y'all, let me tell you something. The fact that they even have to do that tells you they know exactly what you brought to the table. They're missing the, the way that you woke them up in the morning. They're missing the fact that you used to check on them and make them, you know, just like make them feel safe, make them feel seen. They're missing the fact that you would drop everything to hear out what was going on. Even if everybody else called it complaining or if another woman or whoever would consider that man soft, you never treated him less than because he showed you his vulnerable side. Your ex knows that and he remembers that. So to try to fake his conscience out, he'll continue to try to put on the forefront of his mind anytime you were not your best self, which likely he contributed to. And then he'll go to the public and do the exact same thing so that they don't start looking at him as the problem and force him to reckon with what he lost. Yeah, he lost some bad, but he lost a whole lot more good. So, yeah, he going to talk about, you know, the times that you didn't uh, uh, dress up very well or, the, or, or how you put on 10 pounds after y'all got into a relationship or how you wouldn't have sex with him. But he won't talk about how you were having sex with him. You were doing just fine taking care of yourself until you made until he made you feel like you weren't even worthy of love until he deteriorated you. He ain't going to talk about that. He ain't going to talk about how you was cooking for him when you didn't feel like it, how you did have sex with him when sometimes you weren't really in the mood, but you wanted to satisfy your man. He ain't going to talk about whenever you gave him a couple of dollars. Meanwhile, he was spending recklessly and acting like he had it to everybody else, but you knew his truth and you never exposed his truth, that he was broke as hell and leaning on you for a lot of that money. He ain't going to talk about the emotional support. He ain't going to talk about how you peeped out his fake friends that was trying to holler at you. And you didn't give them no attention. He's never going to tell the full truth. That's a smear campaign as well. Because it paints an incomplete, deceptive picture of who you are. And, and what a man is trying to do in that situation is deceive himself into thinking he only lost the bad in you. But it never holds up for long. Especially whenever you move on to an evolved man who is not afraid of those uncomfortable conversations in the time that he has a chance to fix things. He's not afraid of taking accountability when you give him an opportunity to take accountability. He's not living this double life in a relationship to even have to take accountability for some type of deal breaker to begin with. So y'all meet y'all meet conflict and y'all resolve conflict and y'all move forward. And therefore he brings out the best in you. You know what? When that ex sees that you getting loved on by that evolved man the right way, all of that smear campaign, all of that running through different chicks, all, all of that trying to get you back just to, man, look, all that's going to go out the window. It ain't going to do him no good. Of course, you're going to be shutting down any efforts he has to try to get you back anyway. Ain't going to do him no good. Now, the problem that I see is that a lot of you, you've done the work. You're that type of woman. You got your flaws. You got your hangups. You ain't perfect. But boy, when you love, you love hard. You love sincerely. You love genuinely. And you haven't even come across a man that deserves the fullness of you. You may have given it to the wrong man, but you couldn't do it for long because eventually your cup started running empty because he wasn't pouring anything into yours. Or what he was pouring was poisonous and therefore it affected you being able to give what truly is your full capacity to love. The problem is a lot of y'all know how to be your best self. A lot of y'all know how to love, but you don't know how to attract the man who deserves that love, an evolved man. And that's something I went in on on my free master class. Secrets to make an evolved man crave you. If you have not gotten access to that class, do yourself a favor right now. Click the link that you see pinned right here in this comment. Click that link. Get access now before it fills up because it comes down at a certain point. Get access to that master class where I break down the strategies to attracting a truly evolved man. So you can stop repeating that pattern of meeting men and loving men who don't deserve that love because y'all are unequally yoked. But moral of the story is this, a lot of times when a person is doing all of these different antics and theatrics after a relationship, they acting mad, they acting like they got it all together, they acting like they moved on so quickly, they ain't happy, they're not genuinely remorseful, they're regretful, they're in shame, and they're trying to avoid that shame, and they'll do it at any expense, even at the expense of your peace, and you get to determine if they can succeed in that endeavor. But those are just my thoughts. I'm your internet brother trying to look out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you have not yet, again, before it comes down, get access to that masterclass, Secrets to Make an Evolved Man Crave You. That comment right there, click that link. Also in the caption whenever you back out if you don't see the comment. I'll holler at y'all later. Y'all be good.